What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today I'm gonna show you how I made this beautiful, beefy, cheesy Philadelphia cheese steak, Chud style. Coming up, cheese steaks. Everybody loves a good Philly cheese steak. Although, to be fair. I must admit, I've never been to Philadelphia, nor have I ever had an authentic Philly cheesesteak. But if you're telling me there's a sandwich that consists of delicious juicy beef covered with yummy melty cheese with some sauteed onions on a beautiful bun, you know I gotta give it a try. So today we are making my version of the Philly cheesesteak, the chutty cheese steak. We're gonna try and keep it pretty classic, but throw in a few chutty twists along the way, and it is going to be delicious. Oh wait. I don't need a knife right now. Traditionally, a Philly cheesesteak is made with some thin cut ribeye, and that's exactly what we've got here. Some beautiful, nice, thick cut USDA prime ribeyes. You'll also see other cuts used like top round or chuck eye, something like that. And that's something I'm definitely gonna experiment with around the house because it seems like a shame to uh, take a beautiful cut like this and slice it up real thin. But if that's how they do it in Philly, that's how we're gonna do it here. And to start things off, we are gonna give these steaks a nice dry brine, which essentially means just giving them a nice heavy coating of salt and letting them sit in the fridge uncovered on a rack such as this for several hours. I go into more detail on dry brining in the direct heat chicken episode, but this will accomplish a few different things. First and foremost, we're going to flavor the meat all the way throughout, which is going to work out really nicely. Seeing how we're chopping this up, we want every bite to be nice and flavorful. It's also going to help dry out the surface of the meat, which is going to work really well for any way you're cooking steak because it's going to create a tacky surface, which smoke can easily adhere to, as well as create a much better surface for browning. If you have the time, this is definitely a step I recommend doing. So, into the fridge these go for the next few hours. All right, it has been a few hours and these bad boys are looking nice and red. Salt is dissolved, penetrated nicely. So, I think it's time to throw them on the pit. Very nice. Now traditionally when I'm cooking a steak like this, it'll be on charcoal or a wood fire or in a pan with some butter and herbs. But because we're gonna be cooking these on the flat top, we're not gonna get too much additional extra flavor. So to add some smoky flavor and a little bit of a Texas vibe, I'm gonna toss these on the smoker for just a little bit. I'm gonna have this smoker running right around 225. Keep them on there for half hour, 45 minutes, just to get some smoke on them. I'm not trying to cook them through at all. I'm gonna pull them off probably around 110, 115 degrees internal. But adding that nice little smoke element to the Philly cheesesteak is a really nice touch, in my opinion. On they go. This is also where you could add some pepper or garlic or any barbecue rub you like, but we're gonna keep it pretty traditional today, as far as seasoning is concerned. Nice and toasty. So we're about an hour in and these steaks are right around 108, 110 degrees internal. So I'm gonna pull them out and wrap them in plastic wrap. Rare you'll see a steak with no pepper on it, weird. But I'm gonna pop these in. These are still completely rare, if not raw, on the inside. And I'm going to wrap these up. And what that's gonna do is help the smoke really adhere to the meat. And then we're gonna pop these in the freezer, which is going to help stop the cooking process, kind of condense the smoke onto the meat, get it extra smoky, as well as firm it up so we can slice it really thin for these Philly cheese steaks. Mm, smells good already. Into the freezer they go until they're super cold. So while we wait for these steaks to firm up, let's talk about the rest of the ingredients that we're gonna need for our Philly cheese steak. Starting with the bread. Typically it's an Italian hoagie style roll, but uh, these are some French rolls that I found at the local grocery store that should work out just fine. They're stored in a plastic bag, so they're pretty soft to begin with. Kinda crunchy on the outside, but nice and soft and fluffy on the inside. So what we're gonna do is pop these in some foil. We're gonna give them a little bit of a spritz with some uh, water just so they stay nice and hydrated and end up a little bit softer. And then we're gonna wrap these up in foil and pop it on the pit just to keep warm. Next up, an onion, just a classic white onion right here. Simply just gonna dice this up. And you can make this as fine or as chunky as you like, depending on how much onion flavor you want. These are gonna cook down, so you don't wanna make them too small, otherwise they'll burn by the time the steak is done cooking. A nice medium to large dice, still maintain a little bit of crunch and structural integrity. Ooh, 
Beautiful. So we've talked about steak, we've talked about bread, we've got our onions diced, so now let's talk about cheese. Traditionally speaking, there are two types you're gonna run into on a Philly cheesesteak. Number one is good old fashioned cheese whiz. This stuff is kind of weird. It's basically a processed cheese product, similar to American cheese, but it's a little thinner, it's got a little more liquid in it, so it's spreadable at room temperature and chilled. It's kind of got some weird flavors to it, it's kind of got that fake cheese flavor, but it honestly goes really well on a cheesesteak, and I think it's a classic for a reason. But if you're not in the mood for cheese whiz, you'll also typically run into provolone cheese as option number two. And I'm a fan of provolone cheese too. I think it's great on pretty much any sandwich. But today we're gonna take the best of both worlds and make our own cheese whiz out of provolone cheese. So to start things off, this is gonna be a very similar process to our American cheese that we made in the Chud Burger episode. Starts off with about a stick of butter that we're just gonna melt down. To our one stick of melted butter, we are gonna add half of a teaspoon of sodium citrate. This is kinda of what makes processed cheese processed cheese. It's an emulsifier and salt. And it's basically just gonna ensure that our oils and solids all stay cohesive instead of wanting to split. Carl's having a birthday party over there. They're hitting a pinata and guess who didn't get an Fight. And because cheese was, has a bit of an acidity to it, oddly enough, I'm gonna throw in a little shot of hot sauce here. It's gonna help with color as well as adding a little bit of tang. Now that everything's kind of nicely melted together, the sodium citrate has dissolved, we're gonna go in with about a cup and a half, two cups of heavy cream. And this is where that sodium citrate is really gonna help as well, helping that butter and cream all come together and make sure nothing splits on us. It's time to start chipping in our cheeses of choice, which of course, is going to be some provolone cheese. Just gonna keep adding as much cheese as we want until it gets as thick as we want it to be. I'm also gonna throw in some Colby cheese just for that orange cheese vibe. Add a little orange to the party. And the main difference between this and the American cheese that we made in the other video is that we're gonna have a much higher liquid content in this. So this is basically a really good queso as opposed to something that'll firm up and seize up once it's chilled. Because Cheese Whiz was kind of invented as a, uh, a spreadable cheese cheese spread for the uh, British French rabbit. French? Dutch rabbit? Welsh rabbit. Boop, boop, boop. And then you can also start throwing in some cheddar cheese powder. This stuff is basically dehydrated cheddar cheese that's also got some lactic acid and mainly it's got some color to it. They throw in some yellow and orange and red dyes and that's what's gonna give you that bright vibrant color as well as that kind of fake cheese powder Cheeto taste. All right, let's throw in a little bit. Boop. One final step to make sure that this cheese sauce homemade cheese whiz is as smooth and velvety as possible is to hit it with the old stick blender. That's looking really nice to me. I think that's gonna make really nice cheese sauce for our Philly cheese steaks. <laughs> After a few hours in the freezer, this steak is nice and firm. A lot of places will slice it this way, so you got some really big sheets. Other places will slice it this way. Some places will dice it really fine, kind of like steak tartare. For me, I'm gonna go with just some nice thin slices this way. And I like the small pieces so you don't have anything that's gonna pull out on you and get cheese all in your beard. Thin as possible. This is another great uh, meal prep situation too. If you were to do this with some big steaks, slice them all up, back seal them, keep them in the freezer. The little steakum situation going on. Beautiful. <laughs> to this hot skillet, first thing I'm gonna throw down is some of this, and this is some beef tallow. This is the leftover beef tallow from the oxtail video. So this has got some really nice beefy flavor as well as all that vegetable cone feet, and it smells mm, delicious already. To that, we're gonna add a big old pile of onions. Now that these onions are nice and translucent, we're gonna go ahead and toss our meat on. Sing it, John. Meat Mountain. You're such a good singer. <laughs> So as this is cooking down, this is another great opportunity to uh, decide the texture of your beef. If you want it really finely chopped, you can go through and chop it up. If you want long strips, you can kind of leave it intact. All the beef fat is rolling downhill, giving me some extra flavor. And I also got the cheese on here warming up. Oh God. It smells so good. We're gonna go gym style on this cheese steak and start out with some really nice cheese going in. Moment of truth. A lot of people too will go through and scoop out a bunch of meat from the bread on the top slice here, which I'm not really opposed to. It's getting more meat per bite. And then of course, 
You know it's good if it's dripping down your hands already. And that's what it's all about, folks. A beautiful beefy cheese steak. Some nice soft bread. Gooey cheese. Mm-hmm. Nice and smoky. Nice and cheesy. Ah! Can't go wrong. John, come get a bite of this thing. <laughs> See ya. Say cheese. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's delicious. I don't know what else to say. You know, I go as far to say, this is a Texadelphia. All right, y'all, that is it. That is my version of how to make a homemade Philly cheese steak with a few Texas-style twists on there. But if you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you give this recipe a try for yourself, hit me up on Instagram, at ChudsBBQ. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see me cook next. Head over to ChudsBBQ.com for all pit inquiries, wait lists, pricing, and all that good stuff. Make sure to head over to the Leroy and Lewis Patreon for more content from me and the whole gang at Leroy and Lewis. And until the next time I see you, please, Go, cook something outside. Peace!